We will start with uh, Ms. Neela Tanzil, who by now branded as a very bright entrepreneur, a, what is called the awarded in the award she was uh, gained by now. She is among the 10 inspiring women in Indonesia, and there are other national awards. Uh, so congratulations, Neela. Uh, she graduated from international relations, uh, international relations, and then masters in European Communities Studies. Founded this Rainbow Reading Garden, Taman Bachan Pelangi. Working in this field for last many years. In six years, in her presentation, she is going to share with us how really she could make this good success of distributing 80,000 books to the children building 37 children library in 40 islands, remotely located Indonesian islands in the eastern part of Indonesia, with the particular focus of quality children books and children interest. The presentation by Nila Tanjil. Nila, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. My name is Nila Tanzil. I'm the founder of Rainbow Reading Gardens. It's a nonprofit organization focuses on building children's libraries in remote areas in Eastern Indonesia. So before I start, let me give you a context of how big Indonesia is. So this is the map of Indonesia. Indonesia consists of over 17,000 islands and we have over 700 languages and 350 ethnicities. So if, if you wanna visit one island per day, it will take you 46 years to cover the whole country. Do you, do you have time for that? <laughs> so um, the marks here are uh, where our libraries are located. Um, we operate in eastern part of Indonesia. Um, we have libraries in Flores, Lombok, and then uh, Makassar, Spice Island, Maluku, Timor Island, and all the way to the far east in Papua. Why eastern Indonesia? I will tell you why. Eastern Indonesia has the least infrastructure. Um, there are a lot of areas with limited access to water, have no access at all to electricity, let alone access to books. Um, when the World Bank talk about living on less than $2 a day, they're talking about this kid's parents. Kids who live in the mountains area, normally after school, if they go to school, they will uh, go to forests to collect wood. And uh, a lot of them have to walk really far, miles away, to go to school, crossing river, walking in, a, in, a, in an off-beaten path. And what about kids who live in remote islands? Kids who live in remote islands on fishing villages, normally after school, they just play on the beach. And uh, not only that, Eastern Indonesia have the highest illiteracy rate of all provinces in the country. For example, in Papua, the illiteracy rate is 36%, which means one in three people cannot read. And this is the early grade reading assessment, subtest results depending uh, based on the region. As we can see here, Kids on Java and Bali, they can read 59 words per minute. Whereas kids who live in Eastern Indonesia, in Maluku, Nusa Tenggara, and Papua, they can only read 29 words per minute. Half of the kids who live on Java and Bali. As for the reading comprehension, kids who live on Java and Bali, they can understand 78%. Whereas kids who live in Eastern Indonesia, they can only understand 46%.
And not only that, uh, kids or people who live in remote villages, especially kids, they tend to use local languages at home. And this is a challenge in itself. Um, for example, East Nusa Tenggara has always ranked the lowest in the national school exam. A lot of kids don't even graduate from elementary school. Why? Because simply they don't understand the context of the questions because of, uh, because of the language barriers. Literacy is the foundation of all future learnings. Kids with good reading skills, they tend to excel in the classrooms. But unfortunately, we see that uh, there are a lot of kids that still cannot read and write in their fourth or fifth grade. For example, uh, in a village in the border of Indonesia and, in, and East Timor, uh, a school principal told me that their stu his students are only learning to read in their fourth grade, 10 year old. So can you imagine being a 10 year old and not knowing how to read? Think about the 10 year old you. How many books had you read when you're 10? So this is why Rainbow Reading Gardens operate or focuses on Eastern Indonesia. I founded Rainbow Reading Gardens in 2009 with a mission to nurture children's interest in reading and provide access to books to those who live in remote areas in Eastern Indonesia. I want them to have a reading habit. I want them to have access to books and uh, hoping that in the future, when they already grow up, since they already love to read when they're uh, small, they will be they will be reading anything, and hopefully they're the ones who will be uh, the agents of change and help break the cycle of poverty and change lives. So in six years time, we have established 37 libraries across 14 islands and benefiting over 10,000 children, providing books to over 80,000 children's storybooks. Okay, this is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story of this girl named Chitra. She lives on Komodo Island, where the Komodo dragons live. Six years ago, I visited the island and I went to a local elementary school there. And I saw this girl, Chitra, she was standing outside the school gate, watching her friends play soccer in the school field. So I approach her, I ask her, hey, what's your name? Why don't you go play with your friends? She looked at me, but she was just quiet. I asked her again, why don't you go play with your friends inside the school, right? But she didn't say anything. Another girl in a school uniform approached me and said, her name is Chitra, she's shy because she doesn't go to school. So I asked Chitra, why don't you go to school? She remained silent. Her friend, who have become her spokesperson, <laughs> said, her parents don't have money to send her to school. You may have heard the similar story um, thousands of times maybe, especially if you live in developing country, right? But at that time, my heart really broke to see a little girl standing outside a school gate and, and she doesn't even have the courage to, to step into school. And there are millions of uh, children like Chitra, but um, fortunately, eventually, a few years down the road, her parents have enough money to send her to school, but by then, she was already 10 years old, starting the first grade. So this is a typical classroom that kids like Chitra study. Check out the skylight. So we established libraries 
uh, our libraries that are located in schools, we renovated the classrooms and painted the walls together with the local communities. So everyone in the local communities are involved, from the teachers, parents, everyone. And also we provide um, thousands of books. In each of our libraries has at least 1,000 books, up to 3,000 books for the kids. And they're all not school textbooks, but they're all storybooks with a lot of pictures, a lot of illustrations, a lot of colors because the, the objective is to nurture children's interest in reading. And we also have a system, a uh, book leveling system, that is not based on the genre, but based on the reading skills of the kids. So there are six levels um, of the book leveling, but we don't use numbers, not like grade number one, two, three, until six, because it's not based on the class, but it's based on the reading skills. So we use animals, like, um, for the first, uh, for the really early reader, we use ladybug and then like up to elephant uh, for a uh, really expert reader. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Where is it? I accidentally pressed. Okay. Um, so why, why, why do we use book leveling like this? Because um, we learned that in our early years, we used uh, categorizing based on book genre, but it, doesn't, it didn't really work well. Because uh, when a kid came to our library and then chose a folktale book, for example, and then the book has too many texts for her, uh, too many difficult vocabularies, so she will feel discouraged for reading the book. So that's why we choose uh, this book leveling system that based on the kid's reading skills. So when the kid, for example, me in Ladybug, I'm uh, the, I cannot read, I can only read one word, for example, then uh, I know that I'm a Ladybug. So when I go to our library, then I will choose in the bookshelf the one with Ladybug, and I am gonna choose the books with Ladybug stickers on it. And also, if, if my reading skills have improved, then I will choose another uh, level, uh, for example, fish. So all books in our libraries have stickers based on kids' reading skills. And also, if, if you can see, uh, in the room, it has, uh, it has decorations. Um, like on the ceilings, it's all kids drawing. So we ask them to draw something, but also put a writing on it. Like if they, if they draw chicken, then they will have to write down chicken. This is to foster other kids to read as well. So uh, we call this a print-rich uh, print environment. So other than we established libraries and painted the classroom or making the library a child-friendly library, we also trained the school teachers, school principals, and also a local community who have become our volunteer librarians, who are farmers and also fishermen. In the middle is Pak Bacho. He's a local fisherman on Rincha Island, where also the Komodo dragons live. And then next to him is um, Pat Hendrik, he lives in the mountain and he's a local farmer. So we teach the local teachers, school principals, farmers and fishermen who are involved in our li libraries on uh, capacity building workshops on skills. So we teach them uh, skills like how to do book leveling and then how to do storytelling, how to do reading activities like read aloud, shared reading, etc., etc. Um, so they also gain new skills by being involved in our library program. So we have two types of libraries. Libraries uh, that are located in schools and also libraries that are located in local people's houses. For libraries that are located in schools, we also advocate for the so-called library period. So library period means every class have to go to the library for one hour per week. And during that library period is the teacher that does activities in the library, not the librarian. 
And this is the type of the library that are located in local people's houses. As you can see, kids can relax and enjoy their books. It's so cute. We want to emphasize reading is fun. We also hold uh, fun activities at the libraries like reading competitions, writing competitions, uh, arts, and, arts and crafts workshops, and many other activities that kids love. And we, uh, we have a reading courses for those who still cannot read and write. Um, we involve local teachers um, that they will give like two courses, uh, two additional classes every week for those who still cannot read and write. Uh, and this happens not in our library, but we collaborate with the schools, so it happens in the classrooms. Why not in our library? Because we want the kids to have the image of library as a, as a place that is fun, that they go to the library to enjoy reading, not to study. So Chitra, back to Chitra. Chitra is now sad for her primary school experience. She has now the foundation of literacy that will allow her to be an independent reader for life. Chitra now loves to read. And the impacts on kids, kids have become bookworms. And also they dare to dream big. And uh, when we asked the, uh, the teachers who are involved in our libraries, they said that in terms of language, uh, the, the kids have improved in terms of vocabularies of Indonesian language, uh, have improved a lot. And then when they were asked to write a story, the storyline have gotten better because they're used to read. And for teachers themselves, they also gain a lot of skills from our capacity building workshops. We also collaborate not only with local community, but also with external uh, stakeholders like private sectors. And these are our strategic partners, and each of them plays an important, an important role in our cause. For example, Transnusa Airlines. Uh, in the past six years, they've been flying books for free for us. And uh, the Yacht Ed Global, the Yacht community, since they also travel to remote areas of Indonesia, they also help us distribute books to these remote islands. And uh, the Room to Read, if you guys know, Room to Read, we, uh, we are their partner for Indonesia. And for, from them, we learn a lot about this, uh, library management system. And World Horizon is a German-based uh, volunteer institution. They send us volunteers every year. Uh, and work for us for a whole year. And we put these volunteers in remote islands as well. And we have Gojek. Gojek is a startup, famous startup in Indonesia. They help us pick up books from people who want to donate books, and they drop them off to our office for free. So, yeah, there are many many, 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 many children like Chitra in Eastern Indonesia who don't have access to books, who have uh, limited access uh, to school infrastructure. And um, every day that we don't do something is a day that the kids like Chitra not knowing how to read. I want every kid in Indonesia has access to books. So I invite you to help me to achieve my dream. Thank you. We have a video? You have a video? Yeah. Okay, please. We have two minutes left. How long is that? Three minutes. We have a short video of our newly renovated library. So this is in uh, Papagarang Island, in the area of Komodo National Park. Kalau untuk saya pribadi sangat senang sekali dan bahagia 
karena kami di sini di SDN Pulau Pepegaleng ini uh, kurang dengan buku bacaan. So, ada hanya buku let me translate. Saja. The teacher said that um, we're so happy Bukan that we have pribadi, Rainbow Reading Gardens Library because we don't have access to books in our school. The kids are so happy to have a library finally in the school. We just shot this uh, a week ago. Saya pribadi dan kami kami di sekolah belum tahu uh, program atau mana man manajemen uh, untuk pengelolaan perpustakaan. And for me and the other teachers, we didn't know kami how to manage a library before. But since we already got workshops from Taman Bacaan Pelangi from Rainbow Reading Gardens, now we know how to manage a library. Jenjang buku. We learned about book leveling, about library rules that we have to apply, and so many things. Minat baca anak-anak itu cukup tinggi sekali. Dan antusias, tidak hanya pagi di jam sekolah, sore juga mereka tuh berbondong-bondong untuk datang ingin baca. Tapi kami pihak sekolah membagi waktu, nah, contohnya hari ini khusus kelas. Kids really love the books. Um, they have high interest in reading. They always want to go to the library. Karena perpustakaan kan. But since the library room is small, it cannot cater all the kids to go at the same time. So we follow the library period rules. So the girls say that I love reading books because all the stories are really nice. menginginkan Taman Bacaan Pelangi ini selalu peduli dengan sekolah kami dan selalu mendatangkan buku-buku bacaan lainnya, cerita-cerita terbaru supaya tambah menarik hati anak-anak uh, supaya mereka itu uh, terbiasa dengan membaca I hope Rainbow Reading Gardens always provide more books to us so that the kids in our school love and have reading habit. Thank you everyone. A big applause for Nila. Thanks uh, Nila Tanjit. Uh, we have shown a homegrown model in Indonesia developed from needs, emotion and commitment. Thank you very much.